Acromegaly is an under-recognized disease with an estimated three to four people in every one million having been diagnosed in their lifetime. Often diagnosed in adults 30 to 50 plus, acromegaly before puberty is called gigantism. Acromegaly symptoms are common, including weight gain, fatigue, headaches, vision impairment, voice deepening, joint issues, enlargement of the hands, face, and feet, taking up to 10 years for its symptoms to fully manifest. Due to its rarity and its subtle nature, acromegaly is difficult to diagnose and can lead to serious, sometimes even life-threatening health problems such as type 2 diabetes and heart disease. These problems are caused by the liver excreting an overabundance of IGF-1, a critical hormone that regulates the effects of growth hormone. Together, they regulate the growth of bone and tissue and in high concentrations, change the way the body is able to handle blood sugar and cholesterol levels. These changes lead to an increased chance of heart disease, heart attacks, type 2 diabetes, etc. Acromegaly's most prevalent change is the unnatural growth of facial features shown by widening teeth, nose, and fuller lips with soft tissue swelling. Other symptoms are excessive sweating, oily, and thickening of skin. However, even though these individual symptoms by themselves are common among other various diseases, given time, these symptoms collectively resemble that of acromegaly. Even though acromegaly is considered a rare disease and typically diagnosed by an endocrinologist, there are tests and treatments in place to confirm and treat acromegaly. The main problem lies in the detection of the disease. When symptoms are present, request an IGF-1 test, or if still in question, the gold standard test is the growth hormone suppression test. This test seeks to examine one of the most important indicators for acromegaly, the increase in growth hormone levels. Single growth hormone measurements are not diagnostic of acromegaly as growth hormone changes constantly and clears away rapidly. This produces various peaks and valleys of growth hormone, which is typically suppressed by glucose in the normal person. The failure to suppress growth hormone is a common diagnostic of acromegaly. To test this, the patient's GH blood level is measured both before and after they drink a glass of glucose solution. If they do not have acromegaly, the glucose drink typically will cause the GH level to fall. But if they have acromegaly, the GH level will tend to stay high. If the diagnosis is successful, patients are typically subjected to a pituitary MRI to ascertain the size of the tumor and whether or not the tumor is infringing on any of the critical body parts, such as the eyes, so they can perform surgery. As a surgery itself, innovations have allowed for most pituitary tumors to be removed by transcephanoidal surgery. This means the surgeon goes through the nose to get to the tumor. The back of the nose points to the cephanoid sinus and an air passage in the nasal cavity. By making a small hole in the bone, here the surgeon can see the bottom of the pituitary gland and the tumor. The surgery is largely successful, especially if diagnosed early and found at a microadenoma state. This is why awareness is so important to provide early diagnosis. If you feel like you might have the symptoms of acromegaly, request the IGF-1 and oral glucose tolerance test for growth hormone. Treatment typically leads to patients' lives being improved or even saved. The following are photos taken of patients when diagnosed and then recent photos that show successful treatment. We call these our faces of hope. A special thank you to Anish Lakala with Ignite for helping us with this awareness video. Working together, we can help improve the future for patients. Thank you.